equivalent on the other side. But those companies are the ones which will sign with the NOC, not the minister. We also know that for a ship to leave one port for another, loaded with goods, it has to get a letter from the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum indicating that the ship is authorized to carry and offload the cargo to in Kenya. Who cleared the Njeri ship to travel to Kenya? How did it offload? Over the weekend, we were told that the deal has resulted in so-called structured sourcing of the dollar. If that is the case, why has the exchange rate not improved? How come it has not lowered the cost of oil? What benefits have the so-called structured sourcing of the dollar brought for an inch? We are being told that since the deal, you have stopped paying for oil in dollars. We believe that Kenyans don't care whether oil is paid for in dollars, shillings, or rupee. They care about the cost of oil. Nonetheless, we are challenging the government to share with Kenyans evidence of payment of oil in Kenya shillings. Show us documents indicating when the payment was made in Kenya shillings, the bank accounts, and the recipients of the payment. This regime has told Kenyans so many fictitious stories that only documentary evidence will help the country separate fact from fiction. The oil companies and the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum have claimed that it is easy to verify that corporate tax is being paid by the oil companies. We agree that this shouldn't be a difficult task. So we are asking these firms to table the evidence of meeting the corporate tax obligations. Don't tell us, don't tell us, show us. We hope the Kenya Revenue Authority is listening to our demand for evidence of corporate tax compliance by Oryx, Galana, and Gulf Oil Companies. The Ministry of Energy and Petroleum must also table the supplier purchase agreement in this deal. If the deal was to benefit Kenyans, its details should not be hidden from them. In subsequent comments on this matter, since last Thursday, I have questioned why the Director General of the Energy and Petroleum Re Regulatory Authority, Mr. Daniel Kipto, could go to the Middle East, participate in the oil negotiation, and then come back to Nairobi to regulate the prices. How can EPRA be a player and a referee at the same time? Where is the ethics and professionalism in this? How can this be a compliance in compliance with the Public Officer Ethics Act? We are still waiting for answers. When Kenya signed this deal, we had the regional markets, especially that of Uganda in mind. The Gulf nations of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates were definitely aware that we import for the region. This in itself makes it impossible that we could have had a G to G. Whatever the case, we want to know what happens to the oil we intended for Uganda and onward markets. Are we going to be stuck with and forced to buy it at the old high prices while costs are falling elsewhere? Is that the reason Tanzania's has gone down while ours stay unchanged? Are we stuck with old prices because the negotiators already locked the prices and the oil is coming 
in the quantities that was agreed on in March, so many things still do not make sense, despite the massive space bought by the oil companies to expand themselves and the effort of the government to fool and confuse Kenyans. In light of this development, I'm today calling on some three specific institutions that are paid by the Kenyan taxpayer to exercise their mandate and to get to the bottom of this saga as follows. First, the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority. This institution, under the chairmanship of a distinguished, a distinguished scholar, Honorable Justice Professor Jackton B. Ojuang, has the primary duty to protect the people of Kenya from predatory practices. Indeed, it is given, protect, it is given protection in the course of his work through a legally mandated independence. Section 9.3 of the Energy Act says, except as otherwise provided in this Act, the authority shall be independent in the performance of its functions, ex exercise of its powers, and shall not be subjected to the direction or control of any person or authority. Under the Ruto regime, EPRA has been reduced to being a price fixer and to enable predators in the government to exploit Kenyans by overcharging them for petroleum products. Section 10 of the Energy Act gives the authority the duty, among others, to monitor in consultation with the competi competition authority conditions of contractors' operations and their trade practices investigate complaints or disputes arising from the petroleum operations, ensure enforcement and compliance with the national values and principles, protect consumer, investor, and other stake stakeholder interests. The challenge is now on its chairman to rise up to the true mandate of the authority and investigate the following. One, violation of consumer rights under the Bill of Rights in the G2G arrangement. Two, transparency of full contracts signed by all parties in the alleged G2G arrangement. Three, criminal collusion through price fixing and other corrupt trade practices in the G2G arrangement. Four, the controversy surrounding the dispute between Galana Energies Limited and Anjeri Njoroge. The second institution we are challenging is the Office of the Auditor General. Since our appointment, the Auditor General, CPA Nancy Gadungu, has displayed courage in her approach to duty. They are calling upon her to execute her mandate this matter and investigate the following. One, the procurement processes engaged in by the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum in recruitment of suppliers and their local agencies. Two, the criteria applied by the G2G arrangement in arriving at the prices at which Kenya is to buy fuel. Three, the criteria applied by the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority in arriving at the prices the Kenya consumer shall buy petroleum products. Four, the criteria applied in the G2G arrangement in arriving at the damage and other levies and charges. The third institution which we are calling out is the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Some minutes. We take note that Chairman Bishop David Oginde and the Ethics and Anti Corruption Commission have been silent over the goings on in the petroleum sector. 
allegations of corruption, collusion and conflict of interest have been made but no investigations have begun. The challenges on the chairman to start working on the matters raised and to investigate the following. One, conflict of interest by government officials in the lead G2G arrangement. Two, bribery and, co and commissions and kickbacks from revenues raised by the G2G arrangement. Three, criminal collusion through price fixing and other corrupt practices in the G2G arrangement and violation of procurement laws in the recruitment of suppliers and their local agencies. Once again, we reiterate that we stand by every word that we have said on this oil deal. We will not relent on this matter until the truth is known and punishment that fits the crime is meted out. In the meantime, heads must roll at the Energy Ministry and National Treasury. End of statement.